this system, this is the basic, basic system. The majority of the dinghy boats, the small boats, they have this situation. The, the, the hand, the pump, uh, the, the lines, the hydraulic lines, and the actuators, and that's it. In this system, I know what is the level, how can I know the level of the oil? No, no, because here, I need a flashlight. It's difficult, no? Uh, can I know in this system if my oil is contaminated with water? No, in, this, no, uh, in that no, moment? No, no, no. Can I see if I have bubbles? No, no. no I, I am? Okay, I don't like that. Because uh, I love it, a hydraulic circuit where I can check the level, the color, the bubbles. It's easy for me to administrate my hydraulic system. This system is, is working, but it's completely closed. Okay, I am going to install, look at this, I am going to cut it, the lines, and I am going to insert in series this element. What is this? The reservoir. The reservoir. The reservoir. With the reservoir, it's nice, because I can see the level of the fluid. I can see the color. I can see if I have bubbles. And on top, I have fittings. Feedings. I removed the feeding, I added more fluid, I put back the feeding, and with a bicycle pa a pump, I pressurized the system. Ah, this is nice. This is the reservoir. In my opinion, the reservoir should be mandatory. Doesn't matter if I have the simple, the simple, the simple boat. Yeah, you cut it and you insert in series a reservoir. Let's go to the other uh, board and I show how it's connected. The reservoir. Look, what is this? Port and starboard lines coming from the pump. The pump. I I cut it those lines. I enter here and in the other side I continue. And I continue and I enter in the power assisted unit and in the other side of the power assisted unit I enter in the cylinder. In other words, I install in series the reservoir and I install in series the power assisted unit. Oh, nice, no? The only that I need is prepare the fittings. I need a special fitting for this, a special fitting for this, a special fitting for this, a special fitting for this. I need prepare conditions. And now it's nice because I know what is the level of the oil. I know if my oil is contaminated with water. I know if I have bubbles. Excuse me, let me explain something. Those typical systems, when the, when the power assisted unit is off, they work with 30 PSI, 25, 30 PSI. In other words, if my engine is off, or if the power assisted unit is off, how much should be the pressure here in this gauge? 25, 30 PSI. Excuse me, when, with my engine off, and the power assisted unit off, can I move the wheel? Yeah. Yes, you can, but it's a little, yeah, uh, but it's, 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 you can. And the pressure should be? 25, 30. 25, 30. What is the meaning of that? If I, I am the owner of the boat, the captain or the engineer, periodically I need to open the hatch and verify if this gauge in the power steering system is 25, 30 PSI. If the pressure here, go down, you have a leak, and you need to identify in what part of the boat I have the leak of oil. Okay? This is why I recommend use hydraulic oil with different color to identify easily where is the leak. Those hydraulic oils, clear, transparent, are not good for me because in the boat it's difficult in the bilge to identify where is the leak. For that reason, I love it. The, uh, the ATF, automatic transmission fluid, is red color, it's easy to see. But always, always follow the, manu the manufacturing recommendation for the fluid. All right? Pay attention. Suppose that I found that, that this gauge goes down. I have five PSI. It's because I have a leak. I follow the lines and I found that where is the leak? Oh, I found that the leak is here. Okay. You tie the feeding or you replace the feeding, you fix the problem. And now you open this feeding, you add it more fluid until this level, the middle of the top one, you tie 
again the fitting you introduce a bicycle pump and you introduce air where will be located that extra air on top in the reservoir in that pocket oh mr lopez if you introduce air you introduce air in the fluid and now the fluid have bubbles no nope. 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 the flu the air will be here pay attention when i move it the wheel in both directions the, the fluid goes over there extend the cylinder retract the cylinder that that and return here each time that the fluid pass through this container the the bubbles in the fluid goes oh. here all the air will be concentrated here and it's nice because you can you normally the, the the fluid should be in the middle of the second mirror the second the second uh, window sorry that's clear guys okay if my if my oil is here it's because i have a leak of oil and of course the pressure decrease what is the function of this air feeding keep the pressure keep the pressure 25 30. how this is why in the majority of the transom of the boat you have a bicycle pump over there is to keep the pressure of this yeah 25 you tight and finito ready ah of course when when this pump start the pressure increase but when this pump stop the pressure decreasing and the the pump the system at rest should be 25 30 psi what is the no inconvenience what is uh, the problem with in hydraulic circuits uh, in terms of uh, service and maintenance in terms of operation is is because uh, when the when the fluid is working passing through the pump passing through the uh, oil con uh, reservoir and return and that what happened with the temperature of the fluid increase increase dramatically dramatically dramatic. that's why you use the heat exchanger to cool it correct for that reason uh, you need you need to reduce the temperature of that oil with heat exchanger now we, i am going to explain that uh, this is the inconvenience for example you know in your car uh, the the most complete hydraulic element that you have in your car is the, the transmission the automatic transmission the automatic transmission is fully hydraulic is is a, is a robot is intelligent this is in my opinion in the course of transmission i'm going to explain that transmission in details that transmission is in my opinion the invention of the previous century that 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 invention the hydraulic transmission the automatic transmission changed the life of the people completely you remember the cars only manual manual transmission and after the invention of the automatic transmission the life was completely different and the use of hydraulic uh, system changed the life of the people uh, i was talking about the travel lift no the travel lift is a perfect hydraulic equipment you have a diesel engine in the travel lift with a big big hydraulic pump and some actuators and those actuators operate and lift the boat outside you you move boats of 100 tons 120 tons with only actuators uh, that's incredible no? how many times you multiply the, the fluid the pressure of the fluid the torque but of course the temperature this is why when the fluid pass through the circuit and return uh, into the container in the reservoir before the fluid return to the reservoir container uh, the fluid pass for a heat exchanger uh, this is a typical heat exchanger look at this in this particular case this is a marine heat exchanger the fluid enter here, circulate for a serpentine, and return here. And the salt water pass here, and what happened with the pipes, with the oil? Cool, cool, cool. And the oil here have less temperature. That's simple. This is this is a typical heat exchanger. How many heat exchangers? How many heat exchangers? you have in a typical oil. gas or diesel engine oil, fuel. one for the oil to reduce the temperature of the motor oil mm. other for coolant. coolant number two other for hydraulic for the power steering system or a trim perfect hydraulics mm. other for in the diesel the fuel the fuel 
the, the air, the to avoid that the air enter with high temperature in the combustion chamber and produce vapor lock, five. And other one for transmission oil, six. Wow, six heat exchangers. Look at the heat exchanger, this is another one. The fluid enter here, and the fluid goes out here. And here, salt water. You see the salt water? The salt water is passing through the pipes. The salt water touch the fluid? No. No. They don't touch. Ah, okay. The majority of the big boat have it more than uh, 35 feet. They have one heat exchanger in series to reduce the temperature of the fluid in series of the system. That heat exchanger, the raw water pass here, normally is connected with one of the engines. Yeah, using the raw water pump of one of the engines or one of the generators. Everybody follow me? Always, 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 if you have hydraulic circuit, you need heat exchanger. Later, in the next coming class, in an auxiliary system, we are going to talk hydraulic systems in detail. And uh, we are going to, to install different hydraulic systems for twin tubs, for uh, different actuators. Some bow thrusters are hydraulics. The model of the bow thruster is not electrical, it's hydraulic. When you have a big boat, a mega yacht, with uh, 10, 12, 15 hydraulic, different hydraulic circuits, you have a, probably a central hydraulic unit with a big reservoir, with a big motor, and uh, with different group of servo valves, organized servo valve with solenoid. And you see, oh, the first one is for three taps. The second one for the actuator of the passarella. The number three for, in your boat you have that one. No? <laughs> for example, he is the engineer, I am the captain, and I have problem with the, the twin taps. The twin taps go down, but no return. I call, hey Raul, please. Uh, uh, the twin taps no return, go down. And Raul go into the servo valve, remove the solenoids, bring power directly over there. Hey, Captain, it's going down, yes, it's going down. Let me put power here. It's going up, yes, it's going up. Ah, okay, yeah, he found the problem. You remember? Huh? I explained yeah. in the transmission, exactly the same. Yeah, when you have that group of, this is the mm -hmm. central hydraulic unit. I'm going to explain how to incorporate all the different hydraulic systems that you have in your boat in one central hydraulic unit. And I am going to explain how to calculate the capacity of the motor for that central hydraulic unit and the capacity of the container for the oil. Good, this is nice. Okay guys, what is this? This is the rudder sensor. Rudder sensor, look, if the rudder is moving like this, the rudder sensor, that sensor indicates what is the position of the of the rudder. That's important because the, 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 the computer needs that position to compensate. No? This is the, in my opinion, the most critical sensor, the rudder sensor. Normally, it is located with a, with, a, with, a threaded, with a threaded ball here to adjust. This and this should be perfectly parallel. Parallel, yeah? Both of them. Pay attention, when you install the system, when you install the system and you turn on for the first time the autopilot system, the autopilot system says synchronization and you need to press the option yes. Yes, and the, the computer synchronize and recognize this position like the zero position. You need to put the boat, the rudder in, in straight. And you need to enter, start the system and press synchronization and the system now is synchronized with this position will be zero. After that, if you are moving like this, it's seven degrees, no, uh, uh, right side or seven degrees, yeah? But this is zero. Before you start to introduce your first coordinate, you need to synchronize the system. Okay, what happens if somebody, if somebody working in the hand, uh, sorry, working in the transom of the boat with this remove remove that link or or bend it, the link you mm -hmm. need to replace the link and, and synchronize, synchronize again 
Everybody follow me? Okay. And this one, this one, they have the colors and they are located here. Brother, you see? Brother, what is the recommendation before you introduce those Water. wires? Soldering. Soldering. Finito. That's the rudder sensor. The same with the compass. Soldering the ends before you introduce. This one, the hidden, have direct connection to the backbone. Ah, what is the meaning of that? Those sensors are 183. And this one is 2000. 